G'day legends. In today's video, I'll show you how to resize your photos for Instagram's new 4-5 vertical grid layout. Plus, I'll share an automated system in Lightroom and Photoshop that saves you time and ensures your images look their absolute best. So stick around. This workflow will be a game changer for your Instagram posts. If we haven't met before, my name is Tom Woods and I've been a full-time professional photographer since 2004 and since 2019 I've helped hundreds of photographers gain supreme camera confidence through my online programs. If that's something that you're interested in, then check out the description for more details. Now let's talk about Instagram. When it launched, the square format brought back the nostalgia of the old school cameras like the Rolleiflex, the Voigtlanders and the Hasselblads. It was a defining feature that made Instagram unique, perfect for the hipsters who loved everything retro. But fast forward to today and everything has changed. Phones are taller, the app is packed with video content and the square format is no longer king. Instagram has embraced the 4-5 vertical format, not just in the feed, but as of this week, it is now on your grid as well. As a photographer who shoots 95% of my work in landscape orientation, whether it's for websites, billboards, or print, it's fair to say that my photos don't naturally fit this new format. But you know what? You can either complain about the change or you can adapt and make the most of it or find a better, better places to showcase your work. But that's a topic for another video. Today, we're focusing on how to optimize your images for this new grid ratio. The Instagram grid is like a mini portfolio, a quick snapshot of your work for potential followers or clients. So keeping it polished is a smart move. Let's dive into Lightroom first, where I'll show you how to create an action to size and save your photos for Instagram with just one click. Okay, so we are inside Lightroom. We've got a series of mostly horizontal pictures. We want to get them into a 4-5 vertical ratio, but then we want to export them so that they are a good resolution to uh, load up into Instagram. So they look nice and sharp on Instagram, but they're not massive. So these files at the moment are, are big, big JPEG files that I've just called off uh, my hard drive just for the purpose of this video. Um, and first of all, what we want to do is we want to make the crop because we want to get these outside Lightroom into a folder so we can load them onto Instagram. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got the crop tool selected. And then we go over to here and we want to go four by five ratio because that's the right ratio. Now, because it's a horizontal picture in Lightroom, it will go to the four by five ratio of, um, a horizontal picture but we want it vertical. So you can use a keyboard shortcut by just putting X and that changes it to a vertical four by five. You then get your composition that you like and hit return and we've got it in the four by five ratio. So we can go through them, same sort of thing, hit the crop button, go down to four by five, hit the X button to get the right ratio. And if it is a vertical picture like this one, it and you hit the four by five ratio, you don't have to push the X button. It'll just come out. So you just crop it how you want it and push enter. And we've got all these crops happening. And now we've got enough to show you how to export. So, so far we've got this one, this one, and you can select all of these pictures by holding down the op, uh, command key on a Mac. And we can then, once they're all selected, the ones we want to export, we go up to file, go down to export, and we bring up this export window. Okay, so in this export window, we are going to uh, make our settings. So for the image format, we go down to um, file settings first. Image format is JPEG. That's the best. I leave the quality at a hundred percent, hundred, but you can, if you want to save file size, you can sort of screw that back to about 90, but I'll keep it pretty high. Color space is best. SRGB. SRGB is best for all computer work. Um, now we go down to the image sizing and this is where we do need to make a change. At the moment, it hasn't, it's not a resize to fit, but we want the width and the height 
to be 2,500 pixels high, 2,500 pixels wide. So the longer side basically is 2,500 pixels. Now in Instagram, they suggest that you go 1080 by 1350 for the vertical image. Now I have done this in the past and I find when you pinch and zoom a Instagram picture that it sort of goes pixelated really quickly. So I've just experimented with going two and a half thousand. So it's a smaller file, but it still has the ability to have some, some guts to um, pinch and zoom. And I know that Instagram do, do their resizing and they do their reconfiguring every time you load up your picture, but uh, I've done it both ways. I've just found this to be the sweet spot for me. So you can experiment with that. Uh, resolution can come down from 300, but I tend to leave it at 300. Okay, so now we are also going to uh, change the export location because we're going to make this into a user preset. So you don't have to do this all this stuff every time. But it's important to um, have an export location. And I put all of my pictures into my desktop for Instagram only. So every, all of my high res go into an external hard drive. I've got lots of videos on why I do that and how I do that. But I put these ones in, in on the desktop. So I'm going to make a new folder for the purposes of today, but I've already got this folder, but this is going to be an Instagram. That is going to be my folder. So I'm going to choose that. So now those pictures that I have selected are going to go to my desktop, which has got a folder on it called Instagram new pics. And the reason why I put on my desktop and not my external hard drive is because when I get a new external hard drive, well then this, this, um, preset, this user preset will no longer work because it will try and send it to a hard drive that's not there. Whereas your desktop's always there. So hopefully you can understand that. And, um, and instead of going export before that, we're going to go here on this left-hand side and we're going to go add, and this is going to be a new pre, a new user preset. And it's going to be called Insta save new. So you could maybe go Insta Instagram save and you can create that. And now one of my, I've got multiple presets here. I've got high res, high res JPEG. I've got a TIFF save all that sort of thing. But now I've got this new Instagram save and I push export and those four pictures I've got selected there will now end up in a desktop folder. So if I go into my desktop, I've got Instagram new pics and there they are. And they are in the four, five ratio ready to load to my Instagram. So the way I do that is to get them onto my phone is I select all of them and I go airdrop and then I can airdrop to my phone if it's turned on and um, off they go to my phone. I can load them onto Instagram. Now you want, might want to start and stop this video so you can see exactly how I did the export and made that, uh, made that user preset because now what happens is that anytime that uh, I take some new photos, say this is the next day and I'm taking some new photos. I want to, I want to crop it four by five, push the X button so I can get the vertical on it. I've got my picture then now selected. I maybe want to select another one, same thing, four by five ratio X to get it into. And now I've got these two new pictures, but instead of going through the rigmarole of uh, sizing them and everything, now all I do is go export. And because I've made this user preset, Insta save new, all I have to do is export. That will end up inside my new pictures. So there is the pictures there. And once again, I can load them onto my phone and then onto Instagram and they're all prime. They're good quality and that is how I make a, it automated inside Instagram. And say if you had like hundreds of pictures, you can just go select all of these pictures and export them all at once with just one click of the button. So we're going to try and save time here and get precision with your files, file sizes and export. So, uh, yeah, you can run back through that pause and pause and play the video until you've got that set up. And then you've got a perfect way to size your pictures for Instagram. That has worked for me anyway.
Okay, so now we are inside of Photoshop and I've got this picture to save as a Instagram picture. It's always good to have, I'm going to make an action right now. It's always good to have at least two pictures called up inside Photoshop when you make an action because um, when you close a file, it's impossible. I want to close a file with this action. It's impossible to uh, stop the action. You'll see why in a second. For this photo, uh, it's obviously a horizontal picture. So that is not ideal for posting on Instagram. So one way around this maybe is to go to image, image rotation, and we might want to go say counterclockwise. And now we've got the pictures. Um, we've got a more vertical format. We can go into the crop tool. And the ratio has got to be four, five, which it is. So that picture just fits in the, in the four, five ratio. And this is not part of the action. This is more just preparing your picture. So you've got the right dimensions. So this is not part of the action. When we start doing the part of the action, that's when it'll get crucial. So, uh, up here, I've got a folder called surf photo actions. Uh, you go to these little lines here and you go new action and what I'm going to put insta save and we go record now the first thing we want to do is we want to go file and go down to automate and go fit to image and it's already got it at my preferred instagram size which is two and a half thousand pixels so if they're not there you just type them in two and a half pixels wide and height so the longest side will be two and a half pixels and it will sort it out. So this is a good thing if you did want to save horizontal pictures, if you do it this way. It's better than going image size here and putting in the width and um, because then vertical and horizontal pictures won't be the same. Whereas if you do it that way, it's much better. We've started our action. We've made it a two and a half thousand pixel picture. We then want to go file save as not save because you might be working on a high quality picture and you don't want to then save what you've done um, downsized so this is now save as that's a crucial part of it we find our folder with instagram new pics and we then make sure that's on jpeg we go save i always go at about nine quality and the jpeg nine or ten and then okay and then I close that. And then this is the vital part. You've got to stop your action. So now I've made an action here. So it's called Insta Save January 2025. I fit the image to two and a half thousand pixels wide. I saved it in the correct folder so we can find it. Then I close the image. And now uh, then I've stopped the recording. So that is now one of our, of our valuable presets. So you can then. So for instance, this picture, I want to do a four or five crop as well for my Insta. And so I find the four or five crop, I crop it. And then all I have to do is push play here and that zips it off to the folder. So we can go in and we can check that it is now in our folder. Um, it will be, there it is. So now it's ready and sized and it didn't affect the high quality version of that it's just a picture straight into um, a, a copy of the picture straight into my instagram folder which once again i can go airdrop and then airdrop to my phone okay so hopefully that video was helpful for you today to just automate the way that you can size your photos and know that your instagram photos uh, are going to be sized at a quality that's going to look good on the platform it's also going to be cropped at a four or five vertical which is going to sit nicely in your grid so your portfolio or your mini portfolio looks a million dollars on your instagram feed and um, yeah just basically save time if you've got any questions or suggestions on this i would love to hear them in the comments below and if you want to go further with my photography training, there'll be stuff in the description as well for you to check out. Please reach out anytime with suggestions about future videos. Until next time, we'll see you in the next one.